I bought a Mac Mini. So before we get too far into this, I just wanna say right off the bat, the iPad is still my main computer. It's still the main focus of this channel along with iOS and apps and things like that. This is not taking over the channel. This is not taking over my workflow. There are some reasons that I will get to in just a minute about why I bought this that are totally different than probably what a lot of people are thinking right now. The first reason why I bought this was when the M1 Max were announced, I got, I got a lot of questions about running iOS apps and how the M1 Max work and what apps people should use on them. And I just didn't have one. I, I couldn't answer those questions. But also I was really curious. I mean, these are really good computers. These are really interesting computers and I like computers. This is why I have a YouTube channel about tech. I like computers. Now the iPad is my favorite computer, but that doesn't mean I can't like other computers. Like I said, my primary focus will still be the iPad, iPad OS apps, iOS, things like that. But I'll also be able to cover Mac productivity apps, Mac utility, Mac automation, stuff like that. So I'm gonna be able to expand what I cover on this channel to be even more. But again, the iPad is still my main computer and that's where my work happens. So I've mentioned in the past, I have a Windows file server. Now I use this to store archives of projects and backups and a whole bunch of different things that I've talked about in other videos that I'm not gonna get into. But now that I don't have a job in IT and I don't have to deal with Windows anymore, I really just wanted to stop dealing with it. I hate Windows, I absolutely hate it. So kind of one of the minor reasons why I bought this Mac mini, but the main purpose of this Mac mini is to be a server. It is not meant to be a workstation. It is going to be a file server where I back up projects, archives, old video projects, podcast files. Basically, this is going to be where I save stuff. Now, I could have just got a RAID and that's still kind of technically on the plan, but I have a few other things that I wanna use this as a server for. Now, the other thing I'm gonna use it for is the automation. It's gonna be an automation server. I talk about automation a lot on this channel. I wanna be able to use automation other than things like shortcuts and Zapier. I wanna be able to try out stuff like Hazel and Keyboard Maestro, uh, Automator, and even use apps like Mail. When I did my daily iPad workflow series, I kinda hinted that I was thinking about getting a Mac Mini, and one of the reasons why was so I can create Mail rules. Well, a lot of you said that you could go into iCloud and make rules there, which you absolutely can, and you could do that in Gmail too if you have a Gmail account but I don't use Gmail or iCloud. I actually have my own IMAP uh, email address that I use that is completely separate from those. So in order to do something like that, I would need a client like Mail. Now, that's not the primary reason why I got this, but it's a nice added bonus. So I got the M1 one terabyte with 16 gigs of RAM Mac mini. I always try and get as much RAM as possible, always try and go for the, as much storage as possible. One terabyte was easy to justify. The two terabyte cost wasn't because I have a two terabyte NVMe chip in my Windows file server. So what my plan is is to take that out of my Windows file server and to essentially expand the storage of my Mac mini. Now you can't add it as internal storage, we'll have to add it as external storage, but I found a really cool product that will expand the storage and take advantage of the fast chips that NVMe are. So the one that I have uh, does read and write at about 1500 megabits per second. Uh, so it should stay at that read and write speed. It shouldn't throttle it at all. Another reason why I wanted to get the Mac mini was in 2019, we had a really rough iPad OS 13 beta cycle and the iPad OS 14 beta was pretty rough too. A lot of stuff broke, including LumaFusion in 2019. I, I couldn't export videos for weeks. It was, it was an absolute nightmare. I couldn't make anything. And I just can't afford to have that happen anymore. So this is essentially a backup workstation. I do not plan on making this my main editing machine. I don't really have any interest in it. I, I'm still editing in LumaFusion. I have my LumaFusion workflow down, but I just wanted to make sure I had a backup machine in case that happened again, that I could still edit videos on because now that creating stuff is my full-time job, I need to be able to put stuff out. I need to be able to create stuff. So this is essentially a backup to my iPad workflow. I don't think I'm gonna need it. I hope I'm not gonna need it, 
but it's there if I do need it. Then the final thing that I want to try is game streaming. So I kind of want to try out streaming video games on Twitch or YouTube or whatever. I haven't figured out all those details. I'm not sure when I'll do this, but it is something I have a few friends that do it. They really enjoy doing it. And I kind of just want to try it out as something that's a little different from me talking about technology all the time. I think the Mac Mini and the iPad Pro as a combo are really interesting. The iPad Pro is my main work computer. It's where I write, where I answer emails, video editing, podcast editing, photo editing. I, my daily iPad workflow series, I'll link to it in the description. It covered it all. But I wanna have a server. I wanna have a place where I can put stuff to store that's not active projects that I'm working on. And that's where this Mac Mini comes in. It's also gonna be an automation server, a place I can do game streaming, a backup workstation if I need it. And I'm really excited about this combo. And I'll, I'll be talking about it more in future videos, but please do not think I am forsaking the iPad. It's still my favorite computer still the computer I'm using to do all my work. In fact, it's still right here, right out of frame, so I can see my notes. And that's even where I wrote the notes for this video about the Mac Mini. you think I would've wrote it there, but no, I still wrote it on the iPad. So anyways, thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions about the M1 Mac, let me know and I will put together some videos. I, I'm gonna do that expanding storage video and maybe a few others. So let me know what you would like to see and have a great day.